Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 2nd August 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see today's quote. So today's quote, it is regarding child labor. So as you all know that still child labor is prevalent in India. So how many of you agree with me? So if I say yes, child labor is still prevalent in India. So how many of you agree with me? But due to this COVID-19 times, so there is increased. So due to this COVID-19 pandemic, that led to increasing of child labor. So there is a high chance of getting question regarding this child labor in your means. So please be prepared with this topic. And if you see this quote, so life of little one are destroyed when child labor is employed. So whenever there is child labor, so whenever we are employing this child labor, then what happened? So the life of these children will be destroyed because they are not going to have proper education. So if they are not going to have proper education, so they will not be going to develop good skill, right? So they will be not getting high pay salaries. So in this way, if at all, okay, when we are decreasing or when we are trying to decrease the child labor and when we are sending our children to schools instead of work, then that will be helpful for the progressive development of society and now let us try to see first topic it is regarding gst collections so gst collections jump by 28 percentage on imports so this article is important from your economy point of view which mainly comes under your gs paper 3 and now let us try to see why it is in news so first of all here gst that is goods and service tax so this gst it is indirect talk tax but not direct tax so it is indirect tax so here this GST yielded rupees 1,48,995 crore in, uh, as revenue during this month of July. So during month of July, so GST collections were 1,48,995 and it is the second highest monthly collection since the launch of this GST. So we came with the launch of this GST in years 2017 and from since 2017, so this is the second time we had highest GST collections, okay. And if you see some details, it mainly says that July's GST is 28% higher when we are comparing with that of the previous year. That is in 2021, whenever we are comparing with this July collections of GST with 2022 July collections of a GST, so there is 28% of increasing of GST. So here during this time, so we saw there is economic slowdown due to this COVID-19 imposed lockdowns, right? And finance ministry said that we are better reporting and coupled with economic recovery. So here our finance ministry says that. So it is one of the sign of economic recovery that we can see here. Okay, so there are about 35 percentage of higher revenues that is seen in the month of April to July period than when we are comparing with that of 2021. So the revenue display a very high buoyancy and also a clear impact on the various measures taken by this GST council. So here finance ministry says that so because of the various measures taken by this GST council that led to increasing of this GST collections in the month of July. So this is the thing which mainly said by our finance ministry and for five months in row that is continuously for the five months so monthly gst collections or gst revenues that have been more than 1.4 lakh 1.4 lakh crore so here in this month of july so we saw there is a steady increase in this gst revenues so now let us try to see some facts regarding this gst so gst stands for goods and service tax so this GST which introduced through 101 Constitutional Amendment Act, okay. So GST was introduced through this 101 Constitutional Amendment Act of 2016 and it is one of the biggest tax reforms we came up in our country. So it is one of the indirect tax. So what is the difference between this direct tax and indirect tax? So let me know in the comment box, don't forget about this. And actually this GST which subsumed that is which mainly included some other indirect taxes for example excise duty for example VAT that is value added tax next one is service tax as well as luxury tax etc. So actually it is a consumption tax that means so wherever there is a consumption is happening so there the tax will be paid for example if I am going to nearby shop and if I am purchasing uh, Colgate paste so on that paste I will be 
paying GST. Okay, so it is like consumer based tax or destination based tax. And if you're talking about some advantages of this GST, so what are the advantages? So it will help to mitigate double taxation and it will also helps to mitigate cash scaling effect on taxes and the multiplicity of taxes and the classification of issues etc. So this is about this topic and now let us move on to the next topic that is lumpy skin disease. So title says lumpy skin disease spreads to 2500 bovines in Rajasthan. Okay, so this lumpy skin disease which is mainly seen in cattle. So this disease which is caused by virus not bacteria. So in this way you might be confused in your prelims. Okay, so actually whenever any disease is in news. So you have to know about so which is the organism causing that so and so disease. Whether it is bacteria, protozoa or algae or virus etc. And you should be thorough with that. And apart from that you have to also uh, should need uh, about what is the transmission and what are the signs and symptoms so what is the impact on our economy and we have to know about whether the vaccine is there or not whether there is a proper treatment is there or not so in all these dimensions you need to focus on that so and so topic so this topic is important from your science and technology which comes under your gs paper 3 so if you see why it is in use so actually there is a spread of this lumpy skin disease seen in India especially in the part of northern Rajasthan okay northern and western Rajasthan so lumpy skin disease spreading very much fast among bovines bovines is nothing but cattle in western and as well as northern Rajasthan so because of this cattle rarers in this state of Rajasthan they are suffering heavy losses so infection has spread about 25,000 cattle in the last couple of months and because of this infection about 1200 cattle they had been died okay so because of this that will leads to heavy losses for this cattle rearers and if you are talk, talking about some important details so diary sector so whenever there is any cattle which affected with this lumpy skin disease that will leads to reduction of milk okay milk production so that it will be also having some effect on our diary sector as well so diary sector has been adversely affected by this lumpy skin disease and the outbreak of this infection also posed a threat to the state's pollution as well. So wherever, if, if at all any state which is mainly dependent on this uh, diary sector, so if this type of disease that are happening in the cattle means especially the economy of that so and so state will be affected. Not only that, so here as you all know that India which is maintaining a good position in this diary sector. So because of this, so it will be also affecting the economy of country as well. So now let us try to see some facts regarding this lumpy skin disease. So this disease which is mainly seen in water buffaloes and cattle and even wild ruminants. Okay, so cattle family is called as ruminants. So you have to know what is the meaning of rumination. So if you know the meaning of rumination, then you can understand why this cattle is called as ruminant. So rumination means first of all uh, cattle they will be swallowing the gas. And after that, whenever they are sitting lizards, so they will be bringing back that grass, whatever it swallowed, and it will start chewing. So this process is called as rumination. So because of this here, cattle, they are called as ruminants. So I hope it is clear. So incubation period of this lumpy skin disease here is 28 days. That means after entering of this virus into body, it will take 28 days to start multiplying body. So that is called as incubation. So in this incubation period, so we do not see any signs and symptoms. So after this 28 days, we will be seeing signs and symptoms. So here I can also say one more definition for this incubation period. That is a time gap between the entry of uh, so and so pathogen into our body and showing the first signs and symptoms of that disease. So this period is called as incubation period. And incubation period for this lumpy skin disease is long, that is 28 days. So after entry of virus, so for 20 by 28 days, we can't see any signs and symptoms. So after this 28 days, only we can see some signs and symptoms that will be shown. And it also having heavy impacts on the animal health and as well as welfare that can lead to severe economic losses as well. So because of this lumpy skin disease, the mortality rate is also high. So here, as you all know, in Rajasthan, 25,000 uh, bovines, they had been affected but out of this 1200 they had been lost their life right so it because of this it will be leading to some economic co cost for this cattle rearers and this lumpy skin disease has recently spread to 
and within the country of Asia. So because of this, it is mainly posing a threat to our country as well. So how it has been affected or how there is a transmission of this disease seen? So mainly blood feeding anthropods. Okay. For example, you can talk about biting flies, you can talk about mosquito, leeches, sticks, etc. So whenever they are coming in contact with this bovines, so those will be act as a host and they will be transmitting this virus to this bovines. So especially if you see the cattle, so whenever we are taking this cattle for the outside for grazing, so whenever they are getting this, uh, whenever they are seeing water bodies, so they will be getting into the water bodies. Especially you can see this type of incidents most commonly in the summer season. Right, so there here on the body of uh, this cattle, so we can see there will be number of uh, insects, they will be coming and they will be sitting. So some types of insects, they will transfer this, uh, this lumpy skin disease virus. So if you're talking about some more facts regarding this LSD, there is lumpy skin disease. So it is mainly caused by infection of cattle or water buffalo with this lumpy skin disease virus. And according to Food and Agriculture Organization, so mortality rate which is less than 10 percentage and this lumpy skin disease it was first seen as epidemic in Zambia in 1929 itself. So now let us try to focus on some signs and symptoms of this lumpy skin disease. So primarily we can see if cattle they will be getting fever and fluid excretion from the eyes and as well as nose and there will be dribbling of saliva, saliva will be coming from mouth. And next one here is blisters also seen all over the body and animal stops eating. So whenever it stops eating, so the milk production will be affected. Okay. And even it will face some problem regarding chewing of this grass or reduced milk production. Okay. So these are some important things. And here in this image, you can see the uh, cattle just having blisters all over the body. And now let us try to see about one more disease that is African swine fever. So African swine fever reported in Kannur. So this article is important from your GS paper 3 under science and technology. So now let us try to talk about this African swine fever. So why it is in use? So here about 500 pigs they had been culled. Culled means so what are the neck is there. So we are breaking this neck so that what happened that will lead to death of that so and so animal. So already we discussed this topic like so uh, before one week so we sent him an article like so because of this African swine fever here Kerala they went for culling of these pigs. So barely a week after about 500 pigs they were culled in Kerala's Vena district and actually they want to prevent this African swine fever. So African swine fever which mainly detected in this Kerala and to stop the spread of this swine fever so about 500 pigs they had been culled okay and now there is a new infection that is reported in this Kannur. So if you are talking about details it mainly says that so if you, take, if you see this especially this signs and symptoms of this swine fever so here we can see intestinal diarrhea so this pig will be facing this intestinal diarrhea and pig will be also suffering with this coughing and as well as sore throat and next one is psychological impacts like lethargy lack of appetite is also seen and next one here is nasopharynx sneezing and mucus or nose or eye secretion will be there and apart from that so here pig will also have fever that is uh, increased body temperature and even weight loss and poor growth okay so these are some important signs and symptoms of this swine influenza and if you move forward and if you see some more important details regarding this african swine fever so actually this fever it is a highly contagious fever and it is also very much fatal animal disease as well so because of this here we are going for culling of these pigs okay so if you're talking about some signs and symptoms for example we have high fever we can see depression anorexic anorexia Next one here is loss of appetite, hemorrhages, and as well as vomiting, diarrhea, etc. So those are some important signs and symptoms which are seen in this African swine fever. Actually, this fever which was first detected in 1920s and first it was reported in this Africa and later on this disease which has been spread to different continents, for example, Europe, South America, Caribbean islands, etc. And if you're talking about mortality, that is 100% mortality. So if pig which is affected by this African spine fever, yes, it is going to die. So this is about this topic. And now let us try to see next topic. It is regarding 
using a rupee root to get around a dominating dollar so this article which is mainly talking about so how we can do the trade with rupee rather than comparing it of dollar so we are going for not using dollar for the trade but we are using other alternative mechanisms so that is the thing which is discussed in this article and this topic is important from your gs paper 3 under economy so now let us try to understand this topic first we have to understand what is the present scenario and we have to know about what we are doing now and what are the advantages and what are the hurdles so these are some important areas of discussion so if you see here at present so number of countries even including india they are now considering to use other currencies rather than the dollar for the trade okay so now many other countries even india which is trying to trying to go for using of other modes of currency rather than this us dollar okay mainly they want to strength, uh, settle this international transactions so they want to go for using other currencies okay uh, mainly for settling of their international transactions so if you're talking about current scenario or current situation so if you're talking about especially geopolitical developments so due to this russia ukraine war so here what happened so western countries okay western countries led by us they imposed sanctions on this russia and russia also removed from this fifth payment system so because of this here it is one of the cause of concern for russia and that is also one of the important cause for the decreasing of gdp of uh, russia by 20, 10 to 15 percentage so 10 to 15 percentage of gdp of this russia which had been decreased due to the sanctions which imposed by western countries led by us so if you're talking about present scenario so in recent times india is very actively participating mainly using the rupee and even other currency as the settlement payments for the other countries like russia okay so russia which is now facing sanctions so because of this now we are going for trade especially to pay in rupees and even other settlement of payments other than dollar so even earlier even in 2014 whenever there was annexation of uh, crimea so russia annexed crimea so that also resulted that also resulted in a similar sanctions against russia at that time so settling the payment system russia by india so here we are getting mineral oil from the uh, russia from uh, at a discounted price okay and we also getting this s400 triumph defense system so here we are mainly focusing that we need to go for payment in the rupees and as well as if it is possible we can also go for payment in rubles right so if you are talking about what will be the positive advantages so as you all know here uh, depreciation of rupees happening so one dollar is equal to now 70 rupees okay so because of this depreciation or decrease in the value of uh, indian rupee then what happened that will leads to foreign uh, we can say like flight uh, uh, capital flight that will be happening okay so the dollars they are being reduced or they are being taken out by the people who invested in india for example if you see uh, for example if there is any foreigner who is investing for example 100 dollars in india so why he is investing 100 dollars he is mainly focusing on profit so he will be getting the profit but what happened so if if uh, for example if who is present in one country so in that country there is increasing of interest rate in the banks means so here f is a person who is uh, investing 100 rupees in india and he is mainly focusing on profit he want to get profit but he is not getting profit because of this devaluation of currency so what happens so this f person will he will be withdrawing 100 dollars from india and he will be keeping in the banks in in his so and so country where interest rate is high so because of this we can say that will leads to the flight of capital okay so in this way here whenever we are going for trading in the rupee that will be having some advantages in india okay that will uh, leads to some constant maintenance of value of rupee and one more thing here is so what are the arrangements we made so what are the advantages that we are having here is so whenever we are going for this transaction in the indian rupee yes we can also prevent this uh, flight of this capital and next one here is so whenever we are going for buying of oil with this depreciated rubble then what happened we can also get this oil in the discounted pr uh, prices and even whatever the time that will takes for the transport of this oil is also less okay and next one here is india's opportunities they include the possible use by russia of surplus 
worst of rupee account so earlier also we used to go for payment in the other than this dollars at that time we can we can go with this worst of rupee accounts and now also we are using this worst of rupee accounts especially for the settlement of this payments and if you are talking about whenever we are going for this uh, Vostro rupee account so that will be also helpful not only for this oil and petroleum but even pharmaceutical products electrical machinery etc and if you're talking about some hurdles yes yes there will be some hurdles for sure so we need to understand whether the private companies of this Russia they are going to accept this method or not so this is the first important concern and next one here is exchange rate so exchange rate between this rupee and ruble so they are two volatile currencies so here we need to think whether this private parties they are going to accept the rupee for the trade or not and next one here is moreover the deals between russia and india especially on this oil they can be considered by the west as indirect backdoor support okay so whenever india which is going for russia and getting oil at the discounted price so the western countries you are saying that it is indirect backdoor support that india is providing to this russia okay so this is the one important hurdles that we can see. So this is about this topic and I hope it is clear. Now let us move on to next topic. It is regarding unpacking a con, uh, conundrum. So this article which is talking about this monkeypox virus. It is talking about monkeypox virus. So this article is important from your GS paper 3 under your science and technology. So now let us try to see this topic in detail. So why this monkeypox virus is in news? As you all know, India had reported this monkeypox virus. So 15 days ago itself, the so first monkeypox virus case had been reported and it is the first casualty in India. So in this uh, case, 20 year old man from Trishore in Kerala, finally he lost his life due to the suspected monkeypox symptoms. So actually what happened, so there was some evidence that, so he had tested positive in this UAE, United Arab Emirates. So the patient, he was undergoing treatment in private hospital for severe fatigue as well as brain fever. And after six days of arrival to India, so he's lost his life. And the death from this virus is reporting that it is very rare. But we have to think why only one case that reported in India had been ended with a sad tragedy, right? So here because of this experience that we had due to this COVID-19 pandemic, so we can understand this mortality which is mainly depend upon the population also. So even according to this World Health Organization, it says that the case fatality ratio of this monkeypox virus, it is like 0 to 11 percentage. Okay, and general people, they, uh, in the general people, the mortality rate here is 0 to 11 percentage. And this mortality rate which is high when we are comparing with that of young children. So in the recent days, here the case fatality ratio has been around 3% to 6%. And disease has been around in Africa since 1970. And it has been reported in US, UK and as well as Israel also. So not only in India but even in the other countries like US, UK, Israel, they also had been reported with this monkeypox virus in 1970s. So in 2017, in Nigeria which experienced a large outbreak and the fatality rate of this monkeypox was just 3%. And if you are talking about this monkeypox related deaths in Brazil and Spain, so patients they were reported to have had serious associated syndromes such as encephalitis, lymphoma etc. So if you are talking about transmission of this monkeypox virus, so it may be transmitted through the sexual transmission and even through the close contract. So but it is not transmitted through this air, that is through the droplets as like coronavirus. So here the death in this tissue highlights, yes we need to have a thorough probe and we need to have a proper public disclosure of this case progression as well. So here India announced a task force to monitor this monkeypox virus and its spread and even ICMR Indian Council of Medical Research which has been isolated the strain of this virus and initiated this vaccine markers to develop vaccines as well and to come up with diagnostic treats as well. So in this way here government need to be uh, need to be have transparency in communicating with the potentially severe disease. So this is the need of R. So this is about this topic and now let us move on to next topic. Title says India's unique job crisis. So as you all know that India it is facing one challenge that is unemployment. So especially 
students who complete their graduation so because of lacking of skills they are not getting proper jobs right so now we are going to understand so why india's job crisis is very much unique than compared to that of other countries so this article is also important from your economy which comes in your gs paper 3 and now let us try to talk about this topic and this topic is very important and i collected this article from indian express so don't skip this okay so now why it is in news as you all know that india is currently facing unique job crisis so you are facing unique job crisis because fewer people they are employed in agriculture today okay so as you all know india's economy it is based on primary economy that is agriculture but whoever the people who involved in this agriculture they are coming out of this agriculture and they want to seek the jobs so i want to give you an example here for example nowadays parents they are not accepting to give their daughter to the person who is doing agriculture who is having for example two or three acres of land for example there is a one person who is having two or three acres of land so these parents okay parents of this so and so girl so they are not accepted to give their daughter to a farmer okay who is having two to three acres of land so these parents they want to give their daughter to a person who is doing job for example let us take 50000 rupees per month so this person he will be saving little little amount of money every month and finally he will buy one to two acre of land okay so if, if he is getting good amount of salary then he will be going for buying of this or purchasing of this land but if he is getting uh, less amount of money and if he is having a luxurious life and he is spending a lot of money means so he is not going to even buy this okay so why we can't change the mindset of the people okay to give their daughter for this farmers so think on this lines also actually i saw this in in interview okay recently i think two days ago i saw one interview so there one person he highlighted about this issue so i want to share with you and this is also very important and this type of dimension is also very important to develop your own perspective in this upsc right so please think about this and let me know your opinion regarding this issue in the comment box and if you come back so what happened so in india we are facing currently unique job crisis okay because fewer people they are employed in agriculture today the transformation has been slow so many people they are coming out of this agriculture and they are searching for the other alternative jobs so because of this here we can also think about migration okay so in this migration we can talk about pull factors and as well as push factors again so this will comes in our geography so here actually the, those people who are coming out of this agriculture they are searching in the jobs in the construction sites and even they are mainly employing in some informal sector rather than in industries so we're talking about this map i hope you can see on the screen right so it is talking about the percentage of share of workforce in agriculture so in 1993 to 1994 yes about 60% of people they had been working here but in 2021 2020 to 2021 it is 41 percentage but if you see in this 2018 19 there was just 41.4 percentage of people they are working but there is increase in now why because of impact of this covid 19 and because of this reverse migration okay due to this there is increasing of this agriculture workforce that is seen from the last two years so now let us try to see population engaged in agriculture why it is had been shrinking day by day so if you are talking about the share of india's working population they are mainly engaged in this farming has been fallen quite significantly from last to three decades so from last 30 years onwards so the people do who are working in this agriculture sector had been decreased so if you are talking about this uh, data given by national statistical office and as well as periodic labor force survey they are also say, saying that yes there is decreasing of people who are working in this agriculture so, but here from last two years onwards there is increasing of people who are working in this agriculture because of this covid 19 induced economic disruptions the people they started moving from the cities towards villages and they were searching the jobs in this agriculture and there is also increased enrollment in this mg narega schemes as well right so the current share of agriculture in the gdp of india and when we are comparing with the countries in the same income bracket 
So India which mainly employs about 33 to 34 percentage of entire workforce in this agriculture. So why? Why is this India's job crisis unique when you are comparing with other countries? So in other countries, so whenever people who are coming out of this primary, that is primary sector, agriculture, so there is secondary sector in the manufacturing, so they are mainly absorbing these people. But in India, so we didn't focus on this manufacturing, but we directly focused on this tertiary sector, that is service sector. So here because of this, we are seeing there is unique job crisis in India. So that is the thing which is said in this article. So many uh, so many times here what happened agriculture. So from agriculture so people they are coming outside. So manufacturing sector which has a large or huge potential to absorb this agricultural laborers. But in India there is lack of jobs in manufacturing sector. So this is a one important thing. And next one here is more educated they are not qualified to the programmers to develop software programs. Okay, so one more industry that is especially in this service sector, we had developed in this IT sector. But people who are coming out of this agriculture, that is agriculture laborers, they do not have proper skill set to develop programs, okay, to enter into this software. So here, this is the one of the important cause of concern. And next one here is, so many a time students, they will be preparing for the examinations, for example, like you, like you will, you will be preparing for some central government examinations, state government examinations, railway recruitment board, etc. Okay, sometimes what happens, so in these areas also, so there is not much recruitment that is happening in these sector. That is also one important reason for the increasing of job crisis in India. And Indian workforce, what are the skills they are having? So with that skills, they do not get proper job opportunities. And because of this, so we are unable, we are very much incapable to absorb this sector, this excess labor in our society. So I want to uh, make a note on even unemployment rate so that data is also very important. So unemployment rate dips to 8.2 percentage in January, March 2022. So it is according to this NSO survey. And there is one more survey which says that that is CMIA, Center for Monitoring Indian Economy. So he said that. Indian unemployment rate is 6.57 in January 2022 and you have to remember this data for sure. And even here Indian budget also said about the data. So let me know about what Indian budget said about this unemployment in India. And now let us move on to the next topic it is regarding electoral bonds. Electoral bonds parties mop up over rupees 10,000 crore since 2018. So this article talking about electoral bonds. So this article is important from your quality point of view which comes under your GS paper too. And now let us try to see this topic in detail. So here context says that donations to this political parties through this electoral bonds they have crossed 10,000 crore rupees. Okay so it is a very huge amount. So political parties you are getting donations through this electoral bonds and you have to know about what is electoral bonds when this scheme came into picture so what are the advantages what are the disadvantages so the, we are going to talk about this electoral bonds so electoral bond it is like a financial tool it is like a financial tool which mainly used for making donations to the political party if I want to make any donation to the political party, I will be going to the SBI bank and I will be purchasing this bond and I will be giving this bond to the political party. It is as simple as this. Okay. So the general public, they can issue these bonds to fund these political parties. If any general public, they want to give some funds to the political parties, they can use this electoral bonds. So these bonds, they play similar low role in the bank as bank notes that are payable to the barrier free of interest and demand. So this scheme, that is electoral bond scheme came up by government in 2018. So this is about details of this electoral bond scheme. So here in 2018, we came up with this. So it is like a barrier instrument in nature of promissory note. So how we can use this promissory note in the same way we will be using this electoral bonds. And actually one difference here is in promissory notes we will be writing interest 1 rupee interest 2 rupees interest 3 rupees in interest if you're talking about any finance okay so if you're getting any money from the finance okay finance company so you'll be getting interest rate will be high at least more than 5 rupees like that so here these electoral bonds are interest free banking instruments and next one is if you're talking about eligibility who are eligible so citizens of India okay or any board incorporated in India so they are eligible to get this 
or to buy this electoral bonds on fulfillment of all extent by KYC norms that is know your customer norms so after once you fulfill all these KYC norms then you can get this bond and this one here is so you need to make a payment from a bank account so what is the value of this electoral bonds it will be like multiples of rupees thousand rupees ten thousand one lakh ten lakhs one crore like that okay and and it is also available uh, from the specialized banks of uh, SBI so only the government bank like SBI they are going to issue this electoral bonds but not all the banks and lifespan will be 15 days so within this 15 days that political party need to be deposit that electoral bond with the bank so that the money will be released into their account okay and this is about this electoral bond scheme and let us try to see how this scheme works so first one here is SBI it is a notified bank they are being chosen by the government of India and these banks, banks they will be start issuing this electoral bonds so as a person okay for example if I want to fund any political party so I will be go to the bank and I will be giving so and so money okay and I will be getting this electoral bonds so after I got this electoral bond I will be giving that bond to the political party and this political party they will be depositing this bond in the banks so that they will be getting funds the fund will be released into their bank accounts so in this way here this electoral bond which mainly works so what is the racially so why we need this scheme so especially this electoral bonds introduced to ensure the donations made to the party that would be accounted in the balance sheet okay so if there is no uh, nothing like a transaction which has happened digitally means so we can't get the proper balance sheet that will lead to huge amount of corruption black money etc right so here we are mainly focusing on transparency and here in this bonds donors name will be not mentioned so because of this it will also ensure the privacy of the person and donor who contribute less than 20,000 rupees to any political party so through this purchasing of electoral bonds and they need not provide their identity details like PAN card etc and the central government said that electoral bonds would keep a tap on issue of black money as well so especially in this elections one important thing that comes into news here is black money so they are using the black money and they are giving the money for the people okay and they are buying the oats okay so because of that here this transparency is very important and we came up with this electoral bond scheme so in the absence of this electoral bonds donors they would have no option to donate by the cash okay so that will lead to some espionage or as well as ship owning etc so now let us try to see the criticism yes there is a criticism so central criticism of electoral bonds scheme it is that it does the exact opposite of what it was meant to do so here why we came up with this to increase the transparency but there is no proper transparency in this electoral funding or election funding for example there is anonymity that is mainly seen right so if I want to provide or if I want to fund 20,000 rupees or 15,000 rupees that is less than 20,000 rupees so there is no details of my PAN card there right so because of this it will further increase the anonymity and the fact that your such bonds sold via government owned bank that is SBI so SBI which are going to give this funds so because of this here it leaves a door open for the government to know exactly who is funding this opponents so especially their government owned funds so government which is in the power which is in the uh, which is in the power that is ruling party so they can get the information regarding who are the persons you are funding their opponents and in return allows the possibility for the government of the day to either exhort money or to come up with a, or to come up with victimize them okay for not funding to their political party or ruling party so because of this here it is providing some unfair advantage to the party in power or ruling party so because of this it is one of the criticism and now let us try to say next topic it is regarding third edition of vietnam india bilateral army exercise which is going to begin tomorrow so this article is talking about bilateral army exercise between india and vietnam so if you see context why it is in news so third edition of vietnam india bilateral army exercise and the name of that exercise is exercise win backs 2022 and you have to remember this for sure it is whether army exercise or naval exercise or air force exercise and between which countries 
okay so here if you see the location of this vietnam here we have vietnam and the vietnam which is sharing boundary with here we have china here we have laos here we have cambodia and here we have thailand okay and we have to see the location and now let us try to see this location exactly so here we have this part is vietnam okay so here we have this is vietnam and here we have seen south china sea is there and here exactly in this area so there is a there is a some military exercise that is going to happen and you have to see the cities which are present here and you have to see the locations of important areas okay i have to see the boundaries of this vietnam also so that is very important and if you see some details so this exercise it is mainly conducted previously also it is not for the first time so we conducted this bilateral exercise in vietnam in 2019 and then at that time they mainly focused on strengthening of bilateral relations between india and vietnam so india and vietnam they share a comprehensive strategic partnership and defense cooperation as it is one of the key pillar of this partnership as well and it is one of the key pillar or partner of india's act east policy and as well as indo pacific vision so if you are talking about theme of this 2022 exercise between india and vietnam so they are focusing on employment and deployment of engineer company and they are focusing on the medical team as part of united nations peacekeeping operations as well so this is about this topic and these are the current affairs which appear in our today's hindu newspaper and now let us try to see the pdf and there are some more articles that you need to refer so this is today's hindu newspaper pdf and date here is 2nd august and this is delhi edition so first topic is regarding gst levies GST levies that won't burden the poor. So our finance minister, she mainly says that. So whatever the changes that we came with this GST levies on the food items. For example, recently we saw that. So there is increasing of GST on these dairy products, right? So for example, dairy products and curd, lassi, wheat, etc. That will not going to burden the poor households. So this is the thing which mainly said by our finance minister. So here you have to know about what will be the impact of this gst on the common people and as well as what is the impact of the gst on our economic development of the country so in this way you have to uh, re refer and next topic is regarding eight killed and five injured in hospital fire so i think in tomorrow's uh, editorial we can see there will be article regarding this fire accidents in the hospital so here you have to know about what are the reasons for this fire accidents okay so there are number of incidents that we had studied till now regarding this fire accident in hospitals so you have to know what are the proper reasons okay so this is your homework and let me know about what are the reasons for this fire accidents in the hospitals and if you move forward here you can see gst collections had been jumped i discussed that topic and here you can see in city so in delhi there is a second monkeypox case which had been identified and next one here is lumpy skin disease i discussed about this topic and there is one interesting article that is state sponsored biryani festival should not exclude beef okay it mainly said by sc or st commission okay so you have to think about this topic once and here you can see one important image that is about our lingaraj temple in boneshwar so you have to see so to which temple architecture this lingaraj temple belongs to and you have to know about some important architecture of this uh, lingaraj temple as well so this is very important and you can get a question from this area and if you move forward here you can see monkeypox confirmed in dead man so this is also article regarding this monkeypox that is in the in the kerala trishore district and this one here it is regarding african swine fever i discussed this topic and if you move forward here you can see article regarding monkeypox i discussed and if you move forward here there is one article regarding this rupee root so how we are going to use this rupee alternative to this dollar so that is the thing and next in this opaque page there is one article regarding this gig workers so, so you can easily go to that topic so number of times i discussed that right and if you move forward in this text and context there is one article regarding this alpha fold so you have to know what is alpha fold so you can get a question like so recently alpha fold is seen in you so what it is related to so alpha fold it is an artificial intelligence based protein structure and it is like a prediction tool okay it is a artificial intelligence based protein structure and it is a prediction tool and it's mainly based on the computer system that is called as deep neural network 
okay so it is mainly used for the large amount of input data and it also provides desired output exactly like how human brain would work okay so actually this deep mind it is a company which mainly owned by google which mainly announced that this week that it had predicted this three dimensional structure of more than 200 million proteins using this alpha fold so because of this this is the news and you have to know one important thing that is alpha fold it is artificial intelligence based protein structure and there is one article regarding this mic 21 so i discussed this topic so actually so there is a tragic accident of this mic 21 which happened and this mic 21 which crashed in this rajasthan recently right so mic 21 which was induced into our indian air force and we got this from soviet union Right, so here we have to know about what is MiG-21 and why we are still using this. So already we discussed this topic I think two days ago. And if you move forward in this 10th page, okay, page number 10, you can see Sole arrives amid anti-India stir in Maldives. So here you can talk about India-Maldives relations. So this topic is very important from your international relations. And there is one more exercise that is Indian Air Force to take part in this pitch black in Australia. So it is an air force exercise between India and Australia that is pitch black. So you have to remember this. And if you move forward in this page number 11, there is nothing much important. And in this page number 12, you can see IMD said we are going to get normal rainfall in the month of August and September. So we have to see whether there will be increased rainfall or deficit rainfall. Okay. And next one here is intranasal vaccine for COVID-19 in the works. Okay, so it is about intranasal. That means we can take this vaccine through the no nose, that is nostrils. And in the world page, there is nothing much important. And in this business page, that is page number 14, you can see one article important that is manufacturing PMI hits 8 month high. That is about purchasing manager index. So number of times I discussed that topic. So it is now your turn to revise that. So these are some important articles that appear in our today's Hindu newspaper and I covered our current FIDs in the different sources comprehensively and I hope this will be very much useful for your preparation. So by this I am concluding. So if you are new to our channel that is Rathor Science Academy, so please subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so that you can get the frequent notifications whenever we are, get, we are uploading the video. And one more thing here is if you want to get the notes, you can join the Telegram channel. The link is given in description box. So apart from that, we also launched this mains answer writing practice course and this is a one year course. So this is one of the excellent course that we came up in this Rathor Science Academy. So you can join that course. The link of that course is given in description box and the schedule of that course is also given in description box. You can go to that so that you can get some idea regarding how this course is uh, going on. Okay. And if you have any doubts, you can call me on this number 8074765513. So by this I am concluding, thank you so much.